Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the History of Rock podcast. His name is Brandon. He is the DJ. His name is Shim. He is the rock star. Class is in session. We have now officially wrapped up Oz Fest, and it's time to get to some. Well, I think about. I was. I was just about to say it's time to get to some new metal, but we did that with Limp Biscuit. But it's time to get yeah. to the uh, original. The OG. It's the OG new metal. This is definitely the OG new metal, and I've been looking forward to this. I know you've been looking forward to this. I mean, this oh. is one of your this is one of your OG bands. This was right? my band, man. Like this was the one that I I bought everything that they did. I bought everything that I could possibly get my hands on that I could afford that had corn on it. Did you buy the different issues? I tried of issues. No, you I tried. I, I, I tried to budget for it. I just didn't have. I didn't have the money at the time, so I had one. So I bought. I bought the off one of the other one of the other three, not the main, the main album. Right. So still, that might be a collector's item now. Nah, I doubt that. Maybe. Nobody's gonna give not a really. shit about that. But yeah, so we're talking about corn, and. We're kind of changing things up a little bit here in regards to these episodes of the History of Rock. So before it was, we're going to talk about this band and this album. Like you'll notice that's their self-titled album up there. If you were watching the remix episode from a couple weeks ago, you would also notice that at the beginning of the episode, that was there because it didn't change it. Um, But what we're really going to do is we're just going to kind of go through the timeline of the band. And it's probably going to take us about two episodes here for Corn, And the second episode should wrap up with follow the leader and then we'll come back to corn but i want to cover the first three albums which is self-titled life is peachy follow the leader for corn not including their debut like ep thing that they did um and then coming up on halloween day we're going to be dropping rob zombie baby i still don't know if gonna we're going to do rob zombie or white zombie but it's time for corn ladies and gentlemen and a quick side note about this i did a bit on the air where I was looking for the biggest corn fan um, because we were giving away tickets to their tour coming to town. Jonathan Davis was actually my first ever interview on the radio. Kind of a big deal. I remember um, this. I remember you told me about it. I yeah, said, and, and first, you actually, correct me if I'm wrong, but you actually got on the interview and told him, hey, man, you're my first interview. And I'm like your biggest fan. This is a huge deal for me. And he just said, Dan, that's really cool. I'm happy to be here. I'm cool to share it with you. And then he just did a really chill interview with you. Oh, he was fucking amazing. Like he was he yeah. was awesome. And I told him flat out, I was like, look, first of all, the two first two words out of my mouth were, oh shit. I mean it was pre recorded, so um remember I hear him be like, Hello? And I was like, Oh shit. Like I was like, <laughs> Oh my god, it's Jonathan Davis, man. And then I told him, I go, It's all downhill from here, man. Like this is the interview that I wanted. It's my first ever on the radio. I- I'm going to quit after this. And he goes, yeah, fuck it, man. Just be done. And I was like, all right. <laughs> so <coughs> one of the things that we were um, talking about in that in the contest that I would do is, I mean, it was like a deep dive into corn. It's not a simple question of who's the lead singer. Because there's a lot of people who could have been like, well, Jonathan Davis, or even who's one of the guitar players for Korn. Um, right. It was uh, truly like, it was things like, what were the name of the bands before they were in corn? And this is pre Wikipedia days and stuff. I mean, this right, is back right. in 2004, 2005. Um, so, really quickly here, we'll go through the band members. You got Jonathan Davis, he's on vocals and bagpipes. Uh, you got James Monkey Schaefer, one guitar player. Brian Head Welch, another guitar player on bass. Reginald Fieldy Arvizu. I've always guessed that's how you say his last name. Um, Arvizu. Ray Luzier on drums. He's now on drums. The original drummer is David Silveria. Man, did you get your heart broken a little bit when the drummer, when David couldn't be in the band anymore? Um, I think it was, I, I, the, originally it was more heartbroken when Head left. Really? Yeah. And we're getting, I, it's getting weird, a little, man. Uh, we're getting a little, you're, you're, we're getting a little sidetracked. So I was just about get, to say, so no, hold on, hold on. I was just saying we're getting a little sidetracked, but I do want to get through this before we get back to, like, cause th- this it. is, Go this ahead. is some big stuff. So, no, you're going to say something. Go ahead. No, I was gonna. I was gonna say that for me, the one of the more defining characteristics was the rhythm section. The way that he would play was one of my favorite drumming styles. And when I found out, not only was he not in the band, but it was for a tragic reason, like carpal tunnel. Literally, I just can't hold the sticks anymore. I've got a medical condition. I can't play. I just was like, dude, that's just the saddest thing ever. You're in a great band. You're good. You're friends at least well enough that you're still going. And you're such a defining member. Like usually no one gives a shit about the drummer. He was a real big part of why Korn sounded the way they sound. Yeah. And I was super bummed. Anyway, that's what I had to say. So um, 
What the hell was I going to say? Jesus. I don't oh, when Headle- know. Oh, I'm when surprised Headle- you let me talk. Yeah, so the first time <laughs> when he- uh, when Head left, this is all in that timeline when I was living in Eugene and I did that contest on the air where it was right. like really hard corn questions. And um, it was right after that, we I, I, I did a meet and greet with them. And the reason it stands out to me now is because... Uh, you could like you could tell you know just they're sitting at the table and you just get and you're getting your autographs and they just kind of shuffle you along. First of all, no, you could tell none of them really wanted to be there, and Head yeah. looked just like he really, really did not want to be there. Like he wasn't a yeah. dick, he wasn't an asshole. Like I'm not going to say anything about that, like him being like that, but you could just tell he was checked out. Like he just was he yeah. he, he wanted to be somewhere else. And it was a couple of months after that, Papa Roach came into Eugene. I went to go pick them up at their hotel. And the news broke that morning that Head left. I right. broke the news to Papa Roach Holy that shit. Head had left corn. They were fucking stunned. Right. Stunned. I pick him up in the NRQ van. It was this old uh, old uh, Chevy <laughs> Astro van. And I remember I'm sitting there and we're cruising along. Um, we're cruising along back to the station. And I just made kind of the comment. I was like, God, like, did you guys hear the news today? And they were like, no, man, Like we just woke up. We haven't really paid attention to anything. And, of, and again, pre-cell phones, getting all of your notifications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I was like, yeah, I'm like, head left corn, man. And uh, Jacoby's in the front seat, and he's like, no fucking way. Like, yeah, dude. You get, like, he, he, it, was, it completely came out of left field to that guy. So yeah. anyway, we're going to go back into sort of the the band members. And so prior to corn, Monkey Fieldy and David, they were in a group called LAPD, which was Love and Peace Dude. Uh, they would later release an EP under that same title, and it was also that it when they said it was for love and peace, dude. And then I think they kind of realized that's a little bit silly. So then they said it was called "Laughing as People Die" to be a little bit darker with it. Right? Yeah, I was gonna say I didn't see "Love and Peace, Dude" coming up. That that, that really does show kids starting a band. Because I remember the shit that I came up with trying to come up with the the band name before with Sick Puppies. I was like, you'd make up things and try to justify it any way that you could. I remember one of the band, one of the, we had the idea of being called Miscellaneous, literally because we didn't know what sound we wanted to be yet. So we're like, what if we just call the band Miscellaneous? And then we're like, so no one will know what the fuck you do ever. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you're right. That's a dumb idea. So like, but you I've come up with LAPD. We got it. Well, it's a good idea. LAPD is a good idea for a band name, but. Love and Peace, dude, is not the right answer. <laughs> Jonathan Davies came from a group originally called Sex Art and worked as an assistant coroner. This was a big deal in Australia. I remember when Corn first came up and people were talking about it. They were like, dude, no, it's like, oh, it's a big pose. They're suburban kids. I was like, nah, man, the singer like literally worked as a coroner. Like he's really, he's the real deal. And then the question was like, so is he classically trained? Because his voice is so weird and kooky, and then of course it was like, oh, he's he's a child prodigy opera singer that just chose to go to the dark side. So he's like, the the stories after the coroner thing came up, people started making up all sorts of weird shit about him. And this is the weird thing with back then, and how quickly misinformation would travel. Yeah. Um, and, and there was a lot of rumors that would go on about bands. Marilyn Manson fell subject to this a lot, a lot, a lot back in the day. And even Corn did, too. I remember when I went to uh, a couple of buddies and I went to go buy. I was going to go buy Follow the Leader at the CD store back when they had CD stores. Yeah. And I remember one of my friends said something to the effect of, you know, they're all gay, right? And I'm like, what? And it was shortly after that where I was like, I don't want to be around this dude anymore because A, like they're not, but also who, why would that, like why yeah, would that matter? Like, yeah, why yeah. would why would that be your argument? And also, them? what are the odds that all five of them are gay? Like all five yeah. from different and walks just, of life. I mean, like, it's that's, one of those that's weird. Funny. It's one of those weird stories that has always stuck out to me for some strange reason. But speaking of misinformation, I'm going to give a warning right now. Warning, warning, warning. <laughs> this one is gross. It's Okay. Fucking gross. There has Go been a lot of different. Go ahead and skip ahead. If well, you're hold on, I'm going to give them. I'm going okay. to tell them when because right. there's been a lot of different rumors about how they got the name Corn. 
Uh, I'm about to tell you exactly how it happened, and I'm going to start it in like five seconds so you guys can skip ahead if you want because it is fucking disgusting, but I'm going to tell you now. So Jonathan Davis was at a party, and there were these two guys talking about how they loved felching. If you don't know what that is, is just look it up on your own. Then one of them told a story about how his lover ended up defecating in his mouth, and there was a corn kernel stuck on his tongue. <coughs> I told you it was gross, man. I'm one of the people that would have skipped, but I got to sit here for this shit. So, but here's the thing. So that's I the didn't story. know. I didn't that, read ahead. For anyone watching, there's a script. He tells me not to fucking read half this stuff. This is why. I literally just threw up in my fucking mouth. Wait, so so you'd never actually heard that story? No. Oh, okay. And that I don't was one... read them because you tell me don't read the shit that is labeled. Good. That's one of the reasons why I want your natural reaction. I don't want you to be able to prep for that. That's because... not the reason, is it? Is that the reason yeah. the band Jonathan got named Davis, Corn? Jo well, so Jonathan Davis. Actually, you know, read the next line here, and then we'll go. I don't. We'll, I'm we'll scared. <laughs> that, dude, that was the bad part. That's the bad part. All right. Uh, fudge. Here That's we go. Not the bad part. So Jonathan and his friends would then just say the word corn and they would all get grossed out. When he joined the band, the rest of the group hadn't heard this story, but they thought it was a good idea. So the, they go to the band's manager, Larry, and they tell him, hey, we want to name the band corn. And he's like, no, you do not name your band corn. So they told him, all right, fine, screw it. Then we're going to name our band Larry. It's either going to be corn or it's going to be Larry. You fucking pick. And then obviously they went with corn. So they ended up going with corn. And then Fieldy said that they should have the logo with the backwards R like a kid would write it. Right. So Jonathan took a crayon and wrote it in his left hand. It took maybe two seconds. And that is how the logo was created. So these are things. These were part of the rumor mill back in the day. Right. And there's there was these stories, but then there was also some other stories that you weren't like how they created the logo or how they came upon the name. Jonathan <laughs> Davis has confirmed both of these. He just confirmed the corn story with um it was on Steve O's podcast. This is what blows my mind. First off, Steve O, a guy that I'll still watch all of his stuff, but <clears throat> he got famous for stapling his nutsack to his leg. Um, yeah. <laughs> but they're talking to Jonathan about the name Corn, and they're like, so we heard that it was like this or like this. And John's like, no, I called him John. John Jonathan Davis is like, no, that's not it, man. And then he tells the story. And as a as producer, host, the part of me, it's like, do your fucking research, guys. Like, oh, right. there's a okay. better way to approach this. There's a better way to ask these What's questions. The, well, I would have thought that's a fine way to approach it because you're you're telling some of the stories on the podcast and letting him comment on them while you're doing it. What's a better way to go about it? Having some knowledge of what the real story is. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. guide him in that direction. The way that it came off to me was you guys did half ass research. That's just the way that it came right. off to me. I might be wrong. Have I ever told you about the worst interview that I ever did with a guy who hadn't done his own research? Was that the first time we met? Yes, it was. <laughs> no, I think no. Did, I think it's the one where the, like the, like you, the guy he did no research and you you got a little. No, we were live him, on the air and the guy told me. So I actually forgot that we were doing this. Um, so like why don't you just tell me a bit about who you are and why you're here? And I had to just do his job for him and go, well, the name of our band is and the reason we're and he just sat there and like half it was like, mm hmm, mm hmm. Just looking at his watch, like fucking 15 minutes of this shit. And I was I was so insulted and I still did a good interview. I'm like, all right, fuck you. I'm not going to let your lack of preparation destroy my over preparation. I came all this way. But I was like to to one thing to just like you could just read a paragraph. Go online for 60 seconds. Sick Puppies, Australia, name of the song, coming through town. And then just fucking lie. Fake it. But he came up and he actually said, I don't know who you are and I really don't care. You do you, you do the job. Mike's on. Go for it, That kid. does not, uh, quite honestly, it does not shock me at all. Like, I, I can I can snark about how that sounds like buzz. There's I, I've known so many radio people. That, that do that. I, I even met, there was one kid that I worked with in radio where he was like, yeah, I don't like to prepare at all. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, he's like, well, I want it to be natural. I want it to come off like a conversation. Yeah, that's why you prepare. 
because yeah. otherwise you're just fucking scrambling. The reason yeah. that you do your research is so you know what topics this person is well versed in. You don't. Yeah. Hold on. No, we we, we should have started it when I started, man. It's all right. <laughs> well, you were still. Yeah, I guess. So, yeah, we totally should have. Um, but that's see, and that's this is why you do the research before you actually do the interview. It's so that you know the topics that the band wants to talk about. You can kind of guess the topics that they don't want to talk about, and hopefully, you can come up with a couple of questions that they haven't heard before, so it keeps it a little bit interesting for them. You know yeah, because I mean? this yeah. band is probably if they're doing some sort of press junket, they've probably been asked the same goddamn questions. The amount over of fucking times again. I got asked questions about Australia was shocking. Every That's time right. they were like, well, I bet you haven't. Uh, so do you know Steve Irwin personally? And uh, have you ever wrestled a crocodile? And I'm like, every fucking interview for two <laughs> years straight. Yeah, watch out for them drop bears over there. And I started making, and, and you start, you start making up the most outlandish shit so that they just sit on the other end of the microphone and go, really? Really? Drop right, bears? Hold on. That's this the is, thing. Hold on. This is, okay, so really quick before you get to this in, it's one of the reasons why I respect the hell out of Tony Gonzalez who does Oddwire Nights because she was, like literally says, I don't ask her the same fucking questions every time. Try to get it in there, but try know. to get it in there. That's what she said. Hey, all. So, are we up to? Yes. Going back, the thinking behind the name is that it doesn't matter what your band is called. I can attest to that. Screaming at demons. I can. Oh, all of them. All of them. So when it comes, Fucking to- Sick Puppies is the worst, <laughs> dumbest band name ever for what was trying to be a commercial rock band. We had people do market, market research. Girls said, I wouldn't want to listen to that band just because of the name. Oh. And you play the song and they go, oh, that's a nice song. Maybe it's time to change. Maybe it is. But why are they called Sick Puppies? It's Maybe disgusting. it's time to change. That's yeah. you. Hard one. Maybe it's time to change. Your fucking band name. Anyway. So <laughs> when it comes to the logo, it, it, everybody's seen it. Again, it truly took Jonathan Davis like two seconds to do it. I, I even watched a right. video of him of the past few years doing it where he just takes uh, like a pen, like a Sharpie with his left hand and he, he recreates the logo with the backwards R. I haven't been able to confirm this part of the story yet, but the idea for the backwards R apparently came from Toys R Us because some of the band members had previously worked there. That I'm, I, I was iffy on saying this one because I haven't been able to confirm that factoid, but that's something that I have read. Is Toys R Us, does their logo have the backwards R? Yeah. It, would it does. I didn't know remember, that. We didn't remember, have Toys R Us here. Remember it would, uh, oh yeah, with Jeffrey the Giraffe. Yeah. No, that didn't, we we had, we didn't have Toys R Us over here. The band rented a studio a in Huntington. We didn't. It's, the band rented a studio in Huntington Beach, California called Underground Chicken Sound. When we're in a chicken dinner. While they were recording, a crowd had started to form outside. So they ended up playing a, an early version of Clown for the crowd. The group outside the studio grew larger and larger because the sound was so different. And I can attest I to mean, that. I mean, you really want, yeah, you really want to talk about a band that was doing something that was not being done really anywhere else. Yeah. I mean, that's they, <laughs> they, they were, you know, they were the originators of this of this sound, the seven, the two seven string guitars. I the one thing that I've always had the most respect, honestly, for Corn, is that I know what it's like to be in a band when you're getting started, and everyone has a fucking opinion. Everyone comes into the studio, who listens to the demo, whatever comes to a show. Everyone wants to tell you what they think was good and what they don't think was good, and to have had that type of sound to have dealt with all of people's opinions and still have come out with such an original sound and go, yeah, we know that all of you that don't like it, you don't like it because you don't fucking get it because it doesn't sound like anything else. And there's a handful of people that are like, oh my God, we love this because nothing sounds like this. But to have the conviction to say, yeah, we're just going to fucking train wreck through this and some songs are going to sound like dog shit and some songs are going to kind of come together, but we're trying to do something really special. You need five guys that really have each other's back for that type of journey. And that's and that's something, honestly, really, really special. So eventually the band would get spotted by Immortal Records a and employee Paul Pontius, and he would describe the band as, quote, the new genre of rock. And he could not have been more on point because when they were discovered and when they got signed and when the music started to come out, it it it's... 
early not, I mean if, if, think about this grunge was still technically a thing so I mean grunge was kind of on the way out because yeah well no I take it back because it was 94 when, when Cobain passed away so it's very crammed into these yeah. years here late 80s into the mid 90s on, on into the 2000s when mm. rock changed really dramatically well, it's because, like you said, Cur Cobain died in 94, and in 93, Korn released their first demo album. And how do you pronounce this? Nader Meyer's Mind? Nader Meyer's Mind? How do you say that shit? Nader Meyer. Nader Meyer's Mind. Nader Meyer's Mind. So, <laughs> Nader Meyer's. Nader Meyer's Mind was not well received by the critics or the general public. It was given to record companies and people who filled out a flyer given out at gigs. They did for free with Biohazard and House of Pain. So at 93, the band, they had their sound. They're recording, they're playing shows. Cobain's still around. I can imagine people would have gone to Korn and spat on their stage and be like, dude, get the fuck away from us with this noise. You know what I mean? Compared oh, to everything else that was rocking at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would I, I could definitely see that, especially when you yeah. see some of the really early footage. I remember they, I've seen footage of Korn performing I don't know if it's if it's technically said to be like their first ever show, but it's it's one of the first shows they perform. It's in like a house at a house party. Mm. Jonathan's like writhing on the ground, like in tears from the song, and the you know the rest of the band's kind of fucking around on the instruments, and the uh, the rest of the people at, at, at that party are kind of like. <laughs> What's they like, look like what that woman. On, they, they look like the woman on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen is the man dressed as a chunky bar. Walks out the door after going into a gangster. It's a rap. payday bar. It's a pay because <laughs> he was talking <laughs> about bar. how payday was going to be delayed. So by May of 1994, Corn began recording their debut album with producer Ross Robinson. If you want to check out kind of them recording it, there is there, there's a, a great documentary that they did, kind of a behind the scenes with a band called Who Then Now, and that really covers before they make it big. There's even a scene in there where I think it's Monkey is walking through this house and he slaps the wall and he goes, that's where my gold album's going to go. And then they did a sequel called Deuce. That was, I mean, this is, and then it would be after Follow the Leader and Issues and they're yeah. like the biggest goddamn band on the planet. And yeah. then they, have a, they, they kind of flash back to that and then they show Monkey and it's just lined with records like platinum yeah. and double multi-platinum and, and yeah. just all kinds of shit um and it's 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 a really good watch i used to watch it quite frequently when i was younger that's awesome watching man. head try to pump up the tire on his volkswagen beetle <laughs> with a foot pump <laughs> seriously like this like this goes from where they had nothing like they were truly just that band that was yeah. trying to make it big and he yeah. went and bought this car. Fieldy's upset with him because he told him, hey, man, I know cars. Take me with you so you don't get a lemon. And then he ends up buying a lemon. And there's footage of him. Like, you know those old foot pumps that you would use to, like, pull yeah, up in yeah, your yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing that to pump up his fucking tire in his car. That's great. That's fucking great. The album was released on October 11, 1994, reaching number one on the Heat Seekers album charts and peaking at number 72 on the Billboard 200 in February of 1996, a year and a half after its release. So, so by this little, point, they're starting to really move. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, it took a little bit still even after yeah. um, after the album was released. And so it was received well by critics. And then it also, you know, as we know, it kicked off sort of the new metal genre. And it also launched Ross Robinson's career. He ended up going on to work with some pretty big name acts uh, later on. And this was really his his the kind of that that kicking off point to Ross Robinson's mm. career. After the album was released, they hit the road with Biohazard and House of Pain. The record label gave them enough money for their own tour bus. I remember those days. But halfway through the tour, it would break down. I remember those days too. <laughs> and they'd have to find a new one. This tour wasn't very successful at promoting the album. Yeah, I can imagine it would have been really interesting working behind the scenes, trying to connect the dots on this this album that doesn't sound like anything getting it played on the radio when it doesn't sound like anything on the radio and then getting them on shows where you kind of fit but you kind of don't like it would have been very exciting time to be in part of that journey and this is the one thing that i find odd. i mean i worked in in rock radio for you know over 20 years and towards the end you would only first of all like going back to limp biscuit you never really heard limp biscuit on the air anymore at all um mm. and 
the only corn songs you would hear is if they had a new song, it would get played a little bit, and then it would just go away. Yeah. But other than that, it would be Got the Life, Freak on a Leash, um, Make, no, not Make Me Bad. Um, and just, and like a couple more songs. And that was really it. Yeah. Um, you yeah. never heard Blind. You never heard Adidas. You never heard a lot of these, like the songs that really launched corn and the new metal genre, I guess because they just didn't test well. But this is going to be the perfect spot for us to wrap up this mm. episode of the History of Rock because uh, the next one we're going to get into, um, you know what? I'll even say this one right now, and then we'll pick it up next week. Because in April of 1996, the band went into the studio to record their second album, which was done at Indigo Ranch Studios in Malibu. What a beautiful place. I wish I could have Malibu. All right, and then we're going to get into that seminal album at the beginning of the next episode. But thank you very much all for joining us. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for hitting the like and subscribe. Eh, eh, sort of what? seminal. What? Sem- I mean, sem- seminal album. It's r- right. Come on, man. I remember, dude, Life is Peachy was what got me into it. Well, man. I think the seminal album for for the vast majority, it would be it would be Follow the Leader. Like, Follow don't get me leader, wrong. Yeah. Life is Peachy is yeah. fantastic. Dude, the, when they did uh, you know what I think? Ice Cube's I think Wicked people- with Chino? Fuck yeah. People who found corn on Life Is P on on uh, Follow the Leader, they were like me when I was like, "Yo, I just got Green Day's first record. Duke is amazing." Ah. You want to punch that guy in the face? Eh? Right? They'd be like, "Dude, have you heard this new band? They just dropped their first album, Follow the Leader. It's amazing. I can't wait for you to hear it." But the one thing that was always interesting to me too is that the beginning of Blind was so um, yeah. memorable. Yeah. yeah. Oh, are you right? That that yeah. that whole thing is just oh, uh, still goosebumps, man. They dude, still they open can... with that song. Twenty <sighs> fucking thirty years later, dude. Fuck. It's amazing. Jesus. Anyway, Absolutely. all right. Let's wrap her up and get to the next one. All right. So we're gonna get to an encore here in just a couple minutes, but really quick, we do want to make sure we go through all the socials again for Shim, because it's very confusing. I know this. Just, as just you guys are sitting it. there, <laughs> as every as you guys are sitting there, you guys are concerned. Like, my God, is there any way we can get Shim? Just three socials that sound the same. They all have Shim in it. It's at Shim on Instagram. Look for the blue check mark. It's at Shim Moore on TikTok. And then it's at Shimon Moore on YouTube. You can find me on YouTube. It's at The Real Brandalorian. And uh, you can also find me on TikTok. This is the weird one for me. It's Goat The Brandalorian. You can find me on Notice there. how I don't give him shit about having two handles. Notice how I don't say a fucking thing every week. Oh, no, I can't hear you, Shim. What? His name is Brandon. He's the DJ. His name is Shim. He's the rock star. Class dismissed. Wait. Well, because it, we're still a little bit far. How away much? How much longer we got? We can just roll it out. For anyone who's listening Ready on for, Spotify, we dance. Big finish. Big finish. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> All right. Now we're in the encore. Oh, now they, we're they in the still, encore. See, look, they can still watch on Spotify. It's Apple and Google that are fucked. Oh, that's right. They can't watch on Spotify. <sighs> Spotify <laughs> likes us. Um, all right. So I had a few things here that I wanted to bring up on this encore. Because there's one thing that's really just, it's just, it's in my brain. <laughs> and I'm in fucking, brain? It's in my brain. Um, like, I don't know if it's because I haven't le- been leaving the house all that frequently, but mm. God damn, drivers have gotten so much fucking worse. Th- like, so let me, here are some things about El Paso that... I have not run into when it comes to Portland or uh, South Florida or all of Florida or or California, mm-hmm. wherever, like any of these other places that I've been. And you've been all across the globe. So you yeah. can kind of let me know if this is something that translates anywhere else. Because there's a few different things that here in El Paso, the drivers do that is just, it's fucking mind boggling to me. Yeah. The first one is there's one of the main streets over here. It's like a 45 mile per hour um, <laughs> roadway. And... Yeah. So there's three lanes, each side, each direction, going like that. You'll be cruising around 45 miles an hour in the middle lane on your side of the road. You see somebody leaving a parking lot. They're moving super fucking slow, and then they pull out, and then they don't even speed up, and they pick the one fucking lane you're in. They could have picked between three, and they picked the one, so you now either have to fucking lock up your brakes or you yeah. have to fucking scurry your ass around them, and it blows yeah. my mind. Okay. Have you ever been anywhere where people do that shit? Because it's not just like, oh, it happens once every once in a while. Like, no, it's all the fucking time. And what do you do when that happens? Do you yell at your windshield? <laughs> Double birds? No. 
No, I get. I mean, I get angry. I like. I mumble under my breath, but I'm right. not gonna. I'm not gonna start some shit. I don't know what that guy's got in his car. See, I. Uh, that's the whole thing. I. Do, whenever someone does something stupid, I am always, always, always on the defensive. I always look around at every driver and I'm like, they're going to pull into the lane. They're going to slow down. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to try to hit this off ramp. They're going to cross over that lane. I'm always on the defensive. And I don't know why. I think it's because I've driven with my wife in the passenger seat so many times where she just goes, ah, wait, oh, look, oh, look, at oh, oh, yeah, you see baby, baby. And I'm like, so I'm just like always fucking, I'm not tense. I'm actually quite chill, but I'm always on the thing. And the reason that I do it, is because I've had one moment. My, you want to know what shut my wife up fucking hard was when I had both. Everyone's in the car. I'm in the driver's seat. She's so everything's reversed in Australia. Okay. I know you just did the driver's the seat and you said driver's seat. And then she's in the passenger. Yeah. So like, the passenger is on the left-hand side, right? Which is backwards for you guys. Yeah. Right. So you're on the right-hand side. So anyway, point is pulling into a roundabout and there's a, there is a big hill on the left-hand side and there's a big truck that's coming down the hill and it's in the process of slowing down. And I've got right away and I'm heading into the roundabout and I'm like, I've got to, I bet he's going to just keep going, but I'm already in the roundabout. So I'm like, when he keeps coming into the roundabout, there's no one on the other side of the road on oncoming traffic. I'm just going to pull into oncoming traffic lane and just duck and get out of there. And so my wife is on the other side of the car. So all she sees is a fucking truck coming straight at her down the hill and it's about to hit her. And so she turns, she sees it, she screams, baby. And then she's kind of whooshed away from it miraculously because I'm like, yeah, I already had it in my head and I just went whoosh into oncoming traffic, totally illegal move, but I already know there's nothing over there. And then I just go whoosh out and then back into the lane after the roundabout. And I'm like, it's all right, it's under control. And she's, she's like, you need to pull the car over. Can you just pull over for a second? And she's, she's sweating. She's had a full fucking adrenaline jump because she thought she was going to die and the kids are behind her. And after that day, she doesn't tell me how to drive anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I need to have that moment with my wife. Um, so another thing, that I've noticed, especially here in El Paso, is that when when somebody has a problem with their car, or shit, I even saw somebody who I'm assuming they were just flipping on their phone looking for direction somewhere. They don't pull off into a parking lot they're right next to. They just stop in the road. Just fucking when stopped. I've seen it to multiple look at their times. Phone for directions. <clears throat> I saw it yesterday. Um, was it uh, maybe last week? When I was driving back on this one roadway where all of a sudden the, like all the cars in front of me are starting to slow down and the people on the right lane are like zipping over. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And it's because somebody's just fucking sitting there and they're just on their phone. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what are you doing? And then I saw it today. I went to go get my kid from her aerials class. And so I'm going in one direction. There's a car that's coming from my left at this intersection. Yeah. But we're, I'm stopped at a red light and they're stopped as well with the fucking hood up. Right. And there's these two guys just fucking staring inside the car. So finally, this it's right next to a Walgreens. Finally, some guy who's in the Walgreens parking lot runs down there and basically tells him, like, move your car. Like, you're blocking yeah. traffic. Like, you're in the yeah. lane and it's backed up now for fucking yeah. ever yeah. because you guys are fixing this fucking thing when you can yeah. take off the e-brake, put it in neutral, and push this son of a bitch. The e-brake. Yeah. No, I... I told you about when I was at the park and I saw those kids picking up glass, right? I don't, I don't think so. I lost all faith in human beings under the age of 20. Mm. The moment that I saw this, I was at this, I was at the park with my son and we're playing and there's some teenagers that are like 14 years old. And I'm like, they're just old enough to be out on their own. Cool. Whatever. One of them drops a glass bottle smashes all over the ground. And I look at it and I'm like, okay, cool. I'll make sure my son doesn't go over there. Wait, like on, and on it, purpose? Like they no, 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 they just, they no, they, no, they, they knock it over. Okay. They're talking, whatever. They knock it over. Glass shatters on the ground, goes everywhere. So I'm like, oh, I'll pay attention to that for a second. Make sure my son doesn't go over there. In the two seconds that I was watching them, the kid's still talking. And he's like, oh, I dropped my bottle. And he just goes down and just starts just picking it up. Just, just, just picking up the glass. And I'm looking at him like, dude, you're going to fucking slice. I didn't say anything. It took two seconds. And the next thing you know, his hand's covered in blood. And he looks at his ah. friends and he's like, oh my, oh my God, I, I'm, I'm bleeding. 
And the, and the two other kids look at him and go, oh my God, you're bleeding. What happened? And finally, one girl at the end of the table that's got half a brain goes, yeah, you can't just fucking pick up broken glass. What are you, <laughs> stupid? No one knew. And no one said anything. The kids there with fucking broken. And, and I'm like, dude, what have your parents been doing for 14 fucking years? You had 14 years worth of opportunities for someone to say, by the way, when the glass breaks, be careful. Yeah, it's going to be sharp. But they, yeah, that was when I realized, oh, my God, these are the people that are going to be running businesses in 10 years. They're going to be on the phone when I call with a problem and they're going to be on the other end of the line like, uh, uh, uh. that's it. <laughs> Wait, uh, uh, uh. I, I'm having a problem with my long distance provider. You actually added a, an extra 10% onto my bill by accident. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> we need to isolate that shot yeah, of you. That's what uh, it's going to be. Be like, do you have? Are you are you raising chickens there? <laughs> yeah, it, it's, uh, I, 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 I answer the phone. I frequently have uh, moments where I question future generations. And again, we're just going to sound like old men here, but like, there's. <sighs> Like I'll, I'll talk to my kid about something that, that she does that you know, she knows she's not supposed to do. And, I, and I'm like, well, why did you do that? Or like, you know not to do that. And then the answer is like, well, my friends do it. And I'm like, your, your friends are idiots. Like, yeah. like that they're stupid. I mean, yeah. granted, all kids are stupid. That's just, that's a part of being a kid. You become yeah. smarter by learning from your fucking mistakes. And clearly yeah. that kid had never learned not to pick up broken glass with his yeah. bare ass hands and not yeah. do it delicately. <laughs> Yeah. Jesus no, I, Christ. I just, I, yeah, no, but that's when, when you're talking about like people just sitting in the middle of the road, not thinking to go to the side of the road when they're on their phones. I'm like, yeah, that's like, they probably just slowed to a stop until one of them was like, Hey man, just, just stop the car until we figure out what direction we're going as opposed to, Hey dude, pull over the car until See, we figure out what direction we're going. This is something, or that... maybe figure out the direction before you leave the house Fuck, or dude, <laughs> I'm the choir. You're preaching to me, buddy. <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you, man, because this is the stuff that I'm trying to get my kid to understand. So she's hopefully right. she hopefully does not become one of these fools. We should um, change the name of the encore to dad's bitching about shit that doesn't matter. Fuck. No, just cranky old men. Uh, cranky old men. Uh, you know what really grinds my gears? Actually, it'd be uh, it would be we will be the uh, the third movie in the trilogy will be the grumpiest old men. And like, like when I see something like this and my kids in the in the car, I try to point it out, be like, don't be that guy. Yeah. Like you, like you see how, like right there, they almost cause accidents because they just stopped in the middle of the fucking road for fucking reasons unbeknownst to anybody. Like, and then when when her and I, like, she starts to ask questions, and I'm like, oh, thank God, like she's kind of understanding it, she's kind of getting it right. because she's asking more and more questions, and she asked for some other examples of when this stuff will happen. And then I told her how, like, you'll be at a store and you can be looking at like at the grocery store and you're looking at yeah. the soups or whatever fucking section you're at. Where all of a sudden somebody will just kind of like pop up and then they just fucking stand in front of you. Yeah. And it's like, bitch, you could have fucking stood three feet over there and still seen that soup. It's fucking yeah. Campbell's. I can tell you what's right there. That's a fucking original. There's fucking yeah. chicken with stars. And then if you right. want the home style, it's further over that way, you bitch. Right. Move. Okay. Okay. This <laughs> It really became cranky old men. So we should wrap up the song, Corey. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, two, we're going a little too far. Corn part two coming right. up next week.